We are going to go ahead and get started. Welcome, everyone. I wanted to welcome everyone to tonight's webinar. I'm your host, Dr. Lauren Levine. Uh, we've got an amazing turnout tonight. We had uh, close to 1,200 people that were registered. This is obviously a great topic and an even better speaker. I'll introduce him in a, in a minute. Just a little bit of housekeeping. You know, most of you have been on webinars before. You, you kind of know the, the format. Um, I'm going to speak for a couple of minutes. I want to make sure that Dr. Nazarian uh, gets as much time as he would like to speak. He had also mentioned that he wants to leave at least 15, 20 minutes at the end for, for questions. On your screen, you have a GoToWebinar control panel. You can just go ahead and type in your questions as you think about them. We typically don't get to the questions until uh, he's done with the presentation. If there's something very relevant to what's on the screen, I might interrupt him, but usually we wait until the end. Um, in the next couple of days, keep your eye out for a few things. This webinar, as with all other webinars, is being recorded. You'll get a link that you can download and watch the recording at your convenience. That should go out in the next day or so, too. So don't worry if you get distracted or have to leave early because you will be able to watch uh, the webinar in its entirety. If you are watching this live, we, we can't do this for, for people that are watching the re recording, but if you're live, there is uh, an hour of CE credit available. Our sponsor, Golden Dent, will uh, be handling that. Please give them some time. I usually get emails for a few days afterwards, people saying, where's my CE, where's the CE form? Um, there's, we expect you know, there's going to be well over 500 people here tonight, so it does take a while to get those forms put together and, and sent out. So with that out of the way, it gives me great pleasure to reintroduce, because we've done this a few times before, uh, Dr. Arvin Nazarian. Uh, he maintains a private practice in Troy, Michigan, with an emphasis on comprehensive and restorative care. He's a diplomat in the ICOI, International Congress of Oral Implantologists. His articles have been published in many of today's popular dental publications. He's consistently listed as a top dental educator. He's conducted many lectures and hands-on workshops uh, and webinars with us on aesthetic materials and dental implants throughout the US, Europe, and Asia. He's faculty for amplified dental training, which teaches atraumatic extractions, grafting, and immediate dentures. And he also founded the Ascend Dental Academy, which teaches all aspects of dental implants. So, Ara, great to have you back here. I'm looking forward to tonight's presentation. Great. Thank you, Lauren, and thank you for that wonderful introduction. Well, good evening and welcome, everyone. Tonight, we'll be talking about achieving predictable atraumatic extractions and grafting in preparation for implants. Do you find that these are the types of patients that are presenting to your practice? My practice is actually in the suburbs of Michigan, but yet we still find patients that are presenting with gross decay or advanced periodontal disease. In fact, with the aging population that's living longer, we're finding more and more cases of dry mouth and or root fractures or caries. In addition to this, we're also finding the new generation or the millennial generation and this generation is drinking a lot of energy drinks, a lot of different sodas. One example is like Mountain Dew. In fact, these are two examples of patients that came in presenting with gross decay on their entire dentition. In fact, what we find is that these patients can no longer invest in trying to save their teeth but in fact invest for something that has a long-term prognosis that's going to be very beneficial not only to their function and aesthetics but also to their health. So who would have thought that this patient that had rampant decays in their entire dentition would get a full mouth reconstruction? And here we can see the occlusal aspect of how we were able to rehabilitate this. Well, when we find these situations like this, we find patients don't just present with a beautiful edentulous ridge, but we need to learn how to extract and graft in order to set the foundation for implants. And so that's what we'll be talking about this evening. We see that there is, in fact, a huge growth potential for your practice. And the reason for this is because of these different types of populations, whether it's the millennials, whether it's the aging baby boomers, uh, we're finding that this is, in fact, a huge growth potential for your practice. Well, if we know that this is a huge growth potential, 
why have more general dentists not performed extractions and grafting? Well, they were always scared of not being able to get the tooth out entirely or of damaging a blood vessel or a nerve or breaking off a root tip or even having to reflect a flap. Sometimes they were um, apprehensive because they felt they weren't getting reimbursed enough for all the stress that they may have to uh, undergo in taking a tooth out. So our goal is to show and illustrate the easiest way to extract these teeth atraumatically, but also to set the foundation for dental implants. So what is my goal for you to learn this evening? Number one, to show you how to tap a growing market of patients that are needing either single or multiple extractions, proven techniques to atraumatically extract these teeth, but to do it in a predictable and efficient manner. We're also going to overview the different types of grafting materials, the pros and cons of each one, and also the importance through clinical demonstration by reviewing case by case the types of grafting material that we used, the types of membrane, and the different types of technique enabled to get the teeth out atraumatically. Most importantly, our goal is to set the foundation for implant therapy, but also to do this in a prosthetically driven manner. So let's take a look at this example, extraction and grafting with delayed implant placement. This patient presented to my practice where the crown had broken off, it was an endodontically treated tooth, so the patient had no discomfort, but they knew in fact that this tooth did need to be removed because of the discoloration and the extent of the decay. In fact, we can see that the decay extended far below the gum line. Well, if we're going to take a tooth out and set the foundation for implants, then we have to do it in an atraumatic way. And so I looked up the definition of what the ideal tooth extraction is. And I think this is an important concept to remember every time that you extract a tooth. So the ideal tooth extraction is really defined as the painless removal of the whole tooth or root with minimal trauma to the investing tissues so that the wound heals without compromise and no postoperative prosthetic problem is created. I think if everyone remembers the point of this definition, then in fact, they'll take a tooth out atraumatically and keep in mind to preserve the uh, surrounding bone, the surrounding periodontium, so that they can successfully build the foundation for implant therapy. Well, one way that we found that really uh, is utilized quite a bit within our practice is the utilization of the physics forceps. And the physics forceps works as a modified class one lever to remove the tooth. In other words, the force is not applied on the whole tooth, but in fact, a gentle pressure is placed so that the tooth is removed and, and the force is applied going in the direction of least resistance. So in order to do this, one has to remember that the beak of this forcep needs to engage solid tooth structure. And so this is what this illustration depicts. You can see that the beak of the forceps is on solid tooth structure. If for some reason there's severe decay that's going uh, to the extent of the gum line, then one must trough out that area a little bit in order to maintain a solid tooth structure where the beak can be applied um, and then the pressure uh, placed onto the physics forceps on the fulcrum. So step number one is making sure that the beak is on solid tooth structure. The second step is ensuring that the bumper is in the highest position in the vestibule. So a greater distance from the beak, the better the lever. So in this illustration, we can see that the bumper is placed as high up into the vestibule. And at this point, many people want to squeeze. And if you squeeze very hard, you can either break the tooth or break the buccal plate of bone. We have to retrain our minds in order to use this bumper as a fulcrum and to leverage the tooth out of the socket 
as compared to pressing and cracking the bone. One usually finds that within 30 to 60 seconds of putting this rotational pressure onto the forceps, that the tooth is usually evulsed, and then one can either use their fingers, a tooth delivery forcep, or a regular forcep to remove the tooth. So in the past, what we would do to remove a tooth like this would to use an elevator. And as seen in this photo, you can see that there's quite a bit of decay that was probably extending under the gum line. So if we were to try to elevate or luxate this tooth, um, we would find that that portion of the tooth was not solid and the tooth would start to break. However, utilizing the physics forcep and applying the beak onto the solid portion of the tooth on the paddle aspect and leveraging the tooth out, we actually were able to get the tooth out in one piece. So this bifurcated tooth was actually removed in one piece as compared to traditional methods where we would probably section the tooth. Here we've um, curetted out the socket and ensure that all the granulation tissue is removed. And since all the bony walls surrounding the socket are intact, um, our goal is to place a grafting material that's easy to use. And so when we have socket preservation, my go-to material is the Osteogen plug. The Osteogen plug is actually a bioactive, resorbable calcium appetite synthetic graft where the foundation of it is the bovine Achilles tendon, which is the collagen matrix. So here you have the bioactive resorbable calcium crystals within the Achilles tendon collagen matrix. The beauty of this material is that you do not need to have primary closure, so you don't need a membrane. However, in order to predictably grow bone, we want to make sure that this material is engaged within the whole socket. In other words, it's placed into the socket and the material is touching all the walls within the socket. In other words, if you put in a piece of this material and it's in the socket loosely, then you need to add another uh, bullet of material in order to engage all the walls of the socket. You don't want the material in there loose. The other highlight of this material is you'll find that it's got a very nice consistency. Unlike, let's say, a collagen plug, um, as soon as the collagen plug gets wet, it sort of gets slimy. The osteogen material does not get slimy. You're able to condense it within the socket and get a great adaptation within that um, socket or the walls of the socket. The way that it is um, delivered is either in a large form or a slim form. And so the large form, we see it's a 10 by 20, 20 millimeter uh, dimension, where the slim is in fact a 6 by 25 millimeter dimension. Usually we find that the slim is used for premolars and um, laterals, where the large is usually used for molars or for upper centrals. So here we see, since we have a bifurcated root, we can easily take the larger um, osteogen plug and trim it. Now, when I trim it, I like to trim it only three quarters of the way up so that the coronal portion of the plug is still intact so that when we suture over this material, we don't have to worry about the material coming out of the socket. Again, utilizing the osteogen plug no membrane is necessary, and primary closure is also not necessary. That's the beauty of this material. Now, this can only be used for a four-wall defect, in other words, for socket preservation. If for some reason the buckle plate was broken, um, then at that point we would use a membrane and some form of particulate graft, which we'll talk about later this evening. Four months later, we can see the ridge is preserved very well. And at this point, we can go in and atraumatically place a dental implant. Uh, my implant of choice is the Oco Biomedical Engaged Dental Implant. 
it has a proprietary auger tip that allows it to have some great fixation immediately and um, create a nice stabilization. So when we've set the foundation for the implant and we know that the ridge has a good consistency, then at that point we don't need to reflect a full flap, but in fact, just utilize a tissue punch as seen in this photo and keep the procedure very conservative. This in fact um, allows the blood supply to the area to not be diminished in any way as compared to reflecting a flap. We follow with the sequential drills. And so then at this point, we'll place the engaged dental implant. This one happened to be a four by 12 engage. You can see very atraumatic delivery. Once we place the um, implant, we found that the fixation was good. We wanted to ensure that it actually had a very good um, ISQ, a good implant stability quotient. So we checked it with the penguin and found that the resonance frequency analysis was an 81. So this was a very favorable number. There are several hundred papers out there that state that if something has a high ISQ, um, then it has high stability. And because of this reason, we went ahead and placed a stock abutment, scanned that abutment with our CS3600 from CareStream, and were able to mill a full zirconia crown. So the goal for you within your practice is to be able to take your patient from A to Z with a fewer number of appointments. And so this is a great example. So here we saw extraction and grafting with delayed implant placement. Let's take a look at another example. Here we have a patient that presented, and this patient presented with discomfort to both of these molar teeth. So tooth number 30 and 31, the patient explained that they had quite a bit of discomfort, not to hot or cold, but any time that they would bite down on anything. So we reviewed the PAs and we could see that the margins were not the most ideal and that in fact, on the cervical, there had been some patchwork with amalgams. However, we still um, were not able to make a definitive diagnosis we also could see that the root canals were not the most ideal, but we wanted to further investigate and see um, what was causing this patient discomfort. For this reason, we decided to take a scan of the area utilizing our CS8100 from CareStream, and we were able to zoom in onto these areas and look at the cross-sectional views. So this screen shows the software that you get with the CS8100. Uh, uh, 8100, the 3D imaging. And so when we look at the cross-sectional views, we can actually see that there may be, in fact, a fracture in one of the teeth. And in the other two, there's quite a bit of a periapical lesion. So we decided that, in fact, these two teeth need to be extracted. Um, placing two implants would definitely have a better long-term prognosis as compared to trying to do crown lengthening, retreating the endo in tooth number 30, trying to remove that post uh, and retreat it. So the patient agreed that yes, in fact, she wanted these two teeth extracted and implants placed. When explaining to patients that we would like to place implants and actually preserve the socket, we use the Demodent patient education model. And as can be seen in the left segment of the Demodent model, you can see the tooth has been extracted. And this depicts the walls of the socket. Now, what we tell our patients is that if the walls of that socket are less than two millimeters in thickness, then in fact, they will cave in. However, in order to avoid this, we need to place some type of graft. So what I found uh, within the last 23 years of uh, my practice is that if the bony walls are less than two millimeters in width, then I have found that they will collapse and the um, area may not be the most ideal for implant placement. So for that reason, I find that you'll get more predictable and effective results 
if you offer grafting to all your patients to be able to avoid that. And so that really is the art of bone grafting. Utilizing the DemoDent model, we're actually able to explain this in a very definitive manner. And people understand the um, model because it's a visual learning or patient uh, education tool. So day of surgery, our goal is to anesthetize this patient completely and in fact, remove the crown restorations so that we can get this tooth out um, without it breaking in a bunch of pieces. So the WAM key as illustrated here from Golden Den is an ideal way to do it. It comes with three different tools with various sizes. And so what we do is make a channel from the buckle aspect, um, sort of identifying the area that we think that the coronal portion of the preparation would be. And then we rotate this elliptical portion of the WAM key. And in fact, it breaks the seal or lifts the crown off in one piece as depicted in this slide here. Notice that the buckle aspect of this crown or of this preparation had been um, cleaned out and amalgam was placed at one time and it looks like possibly glass animal was placed at another time. Well, we found that patchwork doesn't always work and that's one of the reasons why this patient decided to go on with implant therapy. So the first thing we did is remove the first crown on tooth number 30 with the WAM key. And then at this point, we like to use the carbide burr that comes within the osseous cleaning and shaping kit. So I do have to disclose, this is a kit that I've developed um, that's available through Golden Dent. The three anterior um, round burrs, as you can see in the top of the slide, the small, medium, and large, are used to remove any granulation tissue from the socket where the second or middle burr is used to section any teeth. And then lastly, the last two burrs are um, for leveling bone during full arch reconstruction. So angling that carbide burr in the osseous kit, we go ahead and section the roots. And at this point, we'll use the universal physics forcep or root tip picks to further dislodge these roots. Here we see the standard series of the physics forceps. They come in a lower universal, upper anterior, upper left, and upper right. So in this particular case, we're gonna use the lower universal, and we're gonna treat each root as an individual tooth. So in this photo, you can see how we've first removed the mesial root in one piece, and then we go ahead and remove the distal root. So we have both roots intact without fracturing this tooth at all, utilizing the physics forcep and the buccal plate is still intact. Now at this point, we will do the same thing and remove the crown from tooth number 30. Again, you can see the buccal decay uh, on that tooth preparation. So we'll go in fact and section this tooth confirm it with a radiograph, and then remove each root individually. At this point, we'll take a curette from the Golden Dent kit, curette the socket. If there's any stubborn granulation tissue, we'll use the round burrs and remove any granulation tissue. And at this point, place some type of grafting material. In this case, we wanted to demonstrate utilizing particulate graft with a collagide membrane. So you can choose whatever grafting material you like. Um, in this particular choice, we went with the particulate with the collagide from Golden Dent. Here we can see we've not only sutured the membrane in place, but in fact, we've also placed an apical mattress suture. And so what this does is it prevents the area from getting any tension when the patient is functioning or the lip is moving. Here we see the post-operative radiograph immediately. Of course, we've overfilled. And so if we look at the storyboard of this case, we can see 
tooth number 30 and 31, how we've sectioned 30 after we removed the crown using the WAM key and grafted, and then we did the exact same thing with tooth number 31. This is just a couple weeks postoperatively. You can see the area is healing quite well. And four months postoperatively, the area is healed very nicely. So at this point, we know we're gonna be placing two implants. So we'll go ahead and scan the patient to identify um, the parameters of bone. So this is just the periapical view. And so we'll use our 8100 from CareStream and scan this area and plan. The beauty with the CareStream is it also has a software where you can place any type of implant that you utilize within your practice. It's within the library and um, virtually place that within the CT scan and then send this off to your surgical guide company so that they may produce a surgical guide or you may print it in fact. In this case, we went ahead and took a quick mold with the Silgenaut. And so we forwarded this information to 3DDX and utilizing our plan from the 8100 and taking the model from our Silgenaut impression from Kettenbach, they were able to um, replicate our treatment plan and fabricate a tooth borne surgical guide so that we could place two five by 10 engaged dental implants from OCO Biomedical. And so that's depicted in this slide here. So the day of surgery, we've received our tooth borne guide. Notice as we go to the posterior of the mouth, we want to ensure that we can get the guided drills within this guide. So we see the buckle slits so that we can angle the burrs into the area without the patient having to um, open widely. And so the first thing I'll always do is confirm that this surgical guide can in fact be seated completely. So we'll go ahead and ensure that this is what it looks like. And in fact, I'll take a radiograph to confirm um, where the metal uh, sheaths are for where the drills will be um, going through. So at this point, we want to identify the areas of keratinized tissue. One way to do that is in fact to take your syringe and blanch the tissue. And as you blanch the tissue, the area that puffs up is uh, movable mucosa where you don't want to place an implant. And the area that blanches and sort of turns white is actually keratinized tissue. So in this particular case, we don't want to use a tissue punch, but in fact, we want to reflect a flap and the incision that we make will actually be a little bit more to the lingual so that when we reflect, we'll have uh, adequate keratinized tissue on the buccal aspect. And so this is what it looks like here. At this point, we'll reseat the surgical guide and start drilling for our engaged dental implants. So our goal is to place two five by 10 engaged dental implants in the molar regions. You can see we've done that already. We confirm the depth with the periapical film. And then we place two tall healing caps since we get good fixation with the OCO implant and confirm that they're fully seated. And here you can see we're um, taking advantage of a platform shift. Three to four months later, we in fact, see that the tissue is very healthy, our bone has been maintained. So we'll go ahead and take a bite registration. This is the Futar Bite Fast Set registration material from Kettenbach. We'll take an opposing Silgenaut impression and then for the area of where we'll be taking the impression for the implants, we will be using a heavy and light material. Before we do that, we do want to ensure that these implants are in fact integrated. So not only do we take an RFA reading at the time of placement, but most importantly, we take an RFA reading at the time of impression. And this way we can ensure that the implants are integrated before we invest in uh, lab uh, costs 
um, in case the implants are not successful. So I highly recommend using a, a device such as this to ensure that these implants are in fact integrated. And so here we can see that it has a high ISQ of 77. Since it does, we go ahead and take an impression using the Panasil Heavy and Light. Here we see the impression posts are fully seated. I always recommend this to all the doctors that we train at Amplify Dental and Ascend Dental Academy that we always take a verifying x-ray to confirm that the impression posts are fully seated. Here we can see the full arch impression utilizing the Panasil from Kettenbach. And in fact, since the impression posts and analogs come with the engaged dental implants in the OCO biomedical system, we'll actually place those with the analogs so that the lab can later pour this up. So we forward this, the bite, and the opposing model to the dental laboratory so that they may virtually design CAD CAM abutments and zirconia crowns. Here we can see the lab work and the final zirconia crowns. So we verify the seating of these abutments. We plug the access openings with the Teflon tape. Confirm that these platform shifted CAD CAM abutments are fully seated. And then verify that the crowns are fully seated. And so since this is a distal extension, I routinely like to splint my most posterior implants. If we have a tooth at the most distal, then we can go ahead and um, make these crowns separate if we like. So if we take a look at the slide or storyboard, we can see again with this other example, we were able to in fact take this patient from A to Z starting from extractions and grafting, setting the foundation, using surgical guides to ideally place the implants, allow them to heal, and then restoring these implants with a CAD CAM restoration. Again, it all starts with the foundation. And so that's the goal uh, of this evening is to set the ideal foundation for implant therapy. So let's take a look at some more complicated cases. Here we have an anterior case. And this patient presented, she had had um, a full upper arch, for the most part, a crown and bridge type restoration in the maxillary arch. However, tooth number eight and nine uh, suffered from periodontal disease and had class two mobility. However, the patient was very apprehensive and so Although this is a very routine and simple extraction, the patient was severely apprehensive, and so she was, had a phobia of needles. So I told her, well, we can go ahead and anesthetize this area, and we actually do not need to use a needle. In fact, we can use the Numbi from Golden Dent. And the Numbi uses a little plastic tip or Numbi tip that's angled down, especially towards the notch. And what it does is it's placed into the space of the periodontal ligament. And so what you're doing is an intraligamentary uh, injection. And so you can use your regular syringe or um, a ligaject type of syringe. But what I find is better is actually the syringe that you can purchase with the Numbi system. And it's more of a clicker, it's non-threatening, and uh, not only does it work great for children, but also with adults. And so when we utilize this instrument to anesthetize these patients, what we do is go on the line angles of each tooth and dispense the material. And once you've achieved a click, you've confirmed that that um, anesthetic has been pressed into that sulcular area and um, anesthetize the periodontal ligament area. And so the beauty is you get great anesthesia um, when utilizing the system, especially if you're doing a filling or a simple extraction like this case. Um, most importantly, it, um, it doesn't make the whole face numb. So 
One of the advantages, there's no needle that the patient sees. The patient may even say, hey, I don't feel like I'm numb. So you definitely want to test the area, but they don't have that puffy or fat feeling in their lip, which is nice. And so you don't have to worry about them traumatizing their lip afterwards. And the nice thing is you actually get very good anesthesia for about 35 to 45 minutes. So I highly recommend using this for your um, restorations. And then also you'll find that you can use them for extractions as well. Well, in this case, when we had looked at the CBCT, there was in fact a fenestration on the facial aspect of tooth number eight. So we knew that we're not going to just do socket preservation, but in fact, reflect a little mini flap. Once the patient was comfortable, then we could um, anesthetize them traditionally to go further up in the gingival tissue. And so that's what we accomplished. Now, one of the things I like to utilize is the grafting kit from Golden Dent. And what we're able to do with this is atraumatically reflect the tissue. Here you can see from the kit, we're using the Orban knife. And we're going around the periodontal ligament. Then what I like to do is use the separators. The separators are essentially inserted vertically into the PDL space in order to sever the ligament and laterally expand the socket to create a larger path for these teeth to come out. And so what you see is three various instruments. You have the curved and the straight, and then you also have the bayonet, which is used interproximally, as identified in this illustration. Here we can see the straight. Once we've gotten further mobility, we utilize the physics forceps to atraumatically extract this tooth. And here we can see there's no buccal plate that was broken in removing this. However, based on the CBCT, we knew that there was a fenestration. So our goal is to um, take care of this by using a membrane. So we're gonna go ahead and reflect a flap after we've curetted the granulation tissue from within the socket. And here we're seeing I'm making the incision for the release using our mucoperiosteal elevator. And here we're reflecting the flap. One of the membranes that I really like to use within my practice is the EpiGuide. This works well. You don't need primary closure. And the beauty is if an area of this is exposed, it doesn't degrade very quickly and it doesn't have a foul odor like sometimes when you can get with uh, pericardium. So this is a synthetic membrane that lasts about six to eight weeks. And here we can see we've placed that. In this particular case, we use the Goldas uh, DBM putty with chips. You can see we're packing that into the area. And so we'll fold the membrane over we always want to ensure that the membrane goes apical two millimeters to the void. So we want to extend two millimeters past any void. And so here we've sutured it and we had a flipper fabricated for the patient, making sure that there's no pressure on the area that's been grafted. This is just a few weeks of healing. And now the patient is ready for implant placement. So as you've seen from the examples that we've already reviewed this evening, you can see our goal is to atraumatically extract, set the foundation with some type of grafting material, and then utilizing guided surgery, place these implants so that the implants are prosthetically driven in the most ideal position. Well, let's take a look at another example here, extractions, leveling, and grafting with immediate dental implants. So this is a more challenging case. This patient presented with uh, dentition where we actually recommended full mouth um, extractions. Trying to save these teeth and play herodontics, I think would be a little bit too much. And so our goal was to remove decay and infection and set the foundation for implants, at least in the lower arch, in order to stay within her budget. 
So here we utilize the 3600. And here you can see the image. This is how we portray to the patient the decay. This is great for also case acceptance and doing the workups and bite relations. And so we explain to the patient the various options of treatment that are available. And so for this particular patient, she decided that nine to $12,000 was within her budget. So our goal was to extract all the teeth and at least place some implants in the lower arch for an overdenture. So here we have the immediate dentures fabricated. These are with the Phanaris teeth from Ivoclar Vivadent. Very nice teeth that use a nano hybrid composite on the facial aspect and then PMMA on the lingual or occlusal aspect for strength. So day of surgery, the patient is sedated. We anesthetize the patient and utilizing the physics forcep, our goal is to remove these teeth atraumatically. Once the teeth are extracted, we'll go ahead and remove any type of granulation tissue or any um, roots that may be underlying. So we see that we've extracted all the teeth on the top arch. We're curating the sockets. If there's any stubborn granulation tissue, we'll use the round burrs. I'll further reflect the flax flap so that we may um, file or level these uh, sharp tines of bone that are within the uh, areas of the sockets. Because this is usually the number one complaint that we hear from patients uh, when they're in their immediate dentures, that they have a sharp piece of bone that's poking through their gum tissue. So I always do recommend reflecting a flap and either using a bone file or a bone burr to level um, and remove these ridges. I'm not saying level the ridge so that they're not retentive, but enough so that these sharp tines of bone don't upset the patient. So we've talked uh, about a variety of different allografts. Um, this is actually an autograft. This is using the patient's teeth once the teeth um, have been cleaned of any decay or granulation tissue and using the smart dentin grinder. So we'll place these teeth after they've been cleaned out into the dentin grinder for about three seconds and then sort for about 20 seconds. Place the graft into these little jars, sterile jars, and then using sodium hydroxide for 10 minutes, disinfect this, remove any bacteria, and then using buffered saline, rinse any of the um, sodium hydroxide off of this graft. And now we have the most ideal autograft to use within the sockets. I find in my practice, I'm using the dentin grinder when we're dealing with full arches. I think for one tooth, it's a little overkill to um, go ahead and grind because there is a process. It's about 10 to 12 minutes. Um, however, for a full arch, this works very, very well. In fact, um, in the courses that we'll be talking about at the end of this session that we do live surgery, you'll have an opportunity to try this out at the University of uh, Detroit where we do the courses. Now, in the number two area, you can see that the area still had a little bit of bleeding. And so the graft did, wasn't maintained in that area. One ideal way to control the bleeding is to use a material called Bio, BioViva. This is also from Golden Dent. And what it is is a hemostatic wound dressing that actually promotes optimal healing. It has a cellulose-based and some type of astringent uh, material in there that um, stops the bleeding uh, pretty immediately and uh, allows you to finish whatever procedure that you may be doing. I actually routinely use it when I'm removing thirds. Obviously, we're not placing grafting material in the thirds uh, areas, but the BioVivo works very, very well to prevent dry socket and to control any bleeding. So. I highly recommend that you try that uh, within your practice. Back to this case, we uh, try the immediate denture in, make sure that it's fitting well. 
And then we'll go ahead and continue in the lower arch utilizing the separators from golden dent to further sever the PDL ligament and loosen the teeth. Then utilizing the lower universal physics forceps, we'll sequentially remove these teeth. This tooth or root, I should say, that was uh, um, decayed to the gum line, we utilize the root picks from golden dent to remove. And a lot of dentists stop here. And this is what I um, instruct my doctors at Amplify uh, Dental Learning or at the Ascend Dental Academy is to reflect a flap and level this bone so that we have an ideal platform of bone to use when placing implants or if we're even in fact going to just do um, dentures without implants. In this illustration, we can see where we've reflected a full flap utilizing the bone burrs in the osseous uh, kit and the straight surgical nose cone from Golden Dent. We'll go ahead and level this to the ridge indicated, and then we'll place our OCO biomedical dental implants. Here we have the immediate dentures. We're confirming that when the patient bites together or we bite them together, um, there is an ideal articulation of the upper and lower denture. And at this point, we know that we'll go ahead and soft reline these immediate dentures. Here we have the mucoprin that we used in this particular case from Kettenbach. And usually I'll start within the internal aspect of the denture, extend that to the periphery, and then the palatal area. In the lower arch, we'll make sure we've relieved the areas of where the healing caps extend out of the gingival tissue with a silicone, and then we'll go ahead and do a soft reline in this arch as well. Six to eight weeks later, once everything is healed, we'll place the um, housings from the locators. These are the newer RTX. And in fact, we had a new lower denture made with metal reinforcement because we don't need it with deep flanges because of the retentiveness of the locators. We've relieved any areas where it may not be passively seated on the housings. And using the Tokiyama Rebase 2 fast set, we'll go ahead and do a pickup of the housings. This is also a great material. It's not exothermic. Um, very rarely have I gotten voids with this, and we usually use this for any type of rebasing or picking up of any attachments. It works very, very well. Here you can see we've picked up the attachments. And at this point, we'll go ahead and change to a medium retentiveness insert in the RTX. And now the patient has a new lower overdenture. Real quickly, I'll show one more case, and then we'll go to questions. So I want this to be a routine protocol for everybody that's listening to this presentation. We know that if we're going to address these teeth, we're going to try to remove them atraumatically. So when we're utilizing the physics forcep, we'll go ahead and section these roots immediately using the carbide burr. So here you can see we've sectioned the roots and now we will treat them individually to remove them without any problems. And in this case, because it's just a socket preservation, we can place the osteogen plugs and we'll confirm that with the radiograph as well. We do the same on the opposite side, section the teeth using the carbide burr. This is what we routinely teach at the Amplified Dental, um, where you're able to go to the University of Detroit Mercy and work on live patients um, under the instruction of Dr. Golden and myself. And here we can see we've grafted. And then we also do the top tooth as well. And so if we look at the full storyboard of this patient, we can see that we in fact extracted five teeth and grafted. And so our goal is now to place implants. So going through the scenario that we talked about earlier, we see four implants in the lower arch, one implant in the upper arch, having 3DDX fabricate surgical guides that are tooth-borne, 
we're able to atraumatically place the implants, allow them to heal, and once they've healed, go ahead and take the impressions. Here we, we've used the Panasil again from Kettenbach. You can see how nice the impressions come out. This material is very nice, it's hydrophilic, so you don't have to desiccate the teeth when taking these impressions, but most importantly, you can see it captures uh, not only the hard tooth structure, but also the soft tissue very well. We'll place the impression post with analogs into these impressions from OCO Biomedical, forward it to the dental lab, so that they can make our CAD CAM abutments. And here we see the final x-rays confirming seating of not only the abutments, but the crown restorations. So I think everybody will agree, if we're able to do a few of these a week, not only would it be um, very nice uh, professionally, but also financially it works well for your practice, but most importantly, it allows us to be able to help our patients out. I would definitely like to invite everybody to amplify dental training, and Kurt from Golden Dent will be talking about this momentarily, um, where we actually have live hands-on training, uh, where we extract and graft. In fact, uh, last month, not only did we extract and graft, but we leveled um, bone in preparation for immediate dentures. I'm also the chief clinical officer of Ascend Dental Academy. Um, we've also partnered with Amplify Dental where we um, further enhance your implant training, whether it's single units, multiple units, or full mouth reconstruction. I'd like to thank you for joining us this evening. We do have a mini residency next weekend in Boston, which is level one and two. Um, where you can log on to Ascend Dental Academy. But most importantly, we'll have um, Dr. Levine come back on with Kurt, and he can go over some of the promotions that they are offering this evening. Thanks, Zara. Um, so at this point, I, I do want to introduce Kurt Lawler from Golden Dent. Golden Dent was kind enough to sponsor this webinar. If anyone's ever put together a webinar for 1,000 plus people, you know it takes a lot of time, a lot of energy. And it's a significant investment as well to make it happen. I, I really want to thank Kurt for their ongoing commitment to dental education. And he's just going to take a few minutes to talk about some of the training and make a special offer. So, Kurt, take it away. All right. Our, I mean, uh, Lauren, I appreciate it. Um, if you can, um, can I just show my screen, Lauren? I don't see that uh, coming up here to show my slides. Oh, sure. My pleasure. And so my name is um, Kerr Lawler, and I'm with uh, Golden Den. Let me just get my, my slides up here. Um, I know um, a lot of you that have joined the webinar this evening um, are regular uh, joiners of our past webinars. We've been doing these for a number of years. Uh, we take a lot of, uh, we make a lot of efforts with our speakers to always show new content and uh, discuss some of our new products we're working on and new things that we find for, um, for our customers. So a Golden Dent's based in, you know, in Detroit, Michigan. We're a family-based business um, that has dental roots back to 80 years here in Detroit. And uh, some of these ads I just have here are kind of some, some fun old ads that we have in a, in a scrapbook in our office from the Detroit News in 1940. And uh, it's, it's kind of fun to read some of these. You see here the extractions were um, offered for a dollar at that time. So in 1940, extractions were a dollar. And I just thought I'd show some of these. Uh, old advertisements from the newspaper from Dr. Golden because I think they're they're kind of fun and, and in interesting to look at some of this history. So I'm going to quickly, I'm only going to spend like five minutes and then we'll get into the Q&A session. But I just want to um, quickly go over some of the products that we offer at Golden Dent. Uh, we base our philosophy on really only having products that are simple, predictable, and unconventional. Uh, our whole idea is to have products that are unique, uh, but that also are clinically very good, and they're designed by dentists. And before we add any products to our portfolio, we always go through great clinical testing and really make sure that the products do actually work. And so one of those products we found that we do like a lot is the Osteogen plugs. I know Dr. Nazarian showed a couple cases this evening. Um, this is a really great way to get involved in grafting. 
So if you're not currently grafting or, or even if you are grafting now with conventional methods, maybe using an allograft and a membrane, it, it, if all your walls are intact and you have a four wall defect, the estrogen plug is a really great uh, solution or, or something to take a look at um, because with the promotion tonight that I'll mention with the 15% off, it's $42 a bullet. So if you compare that to uh, the cost of your allograft and, and the cost of your, your membrane, uh, you can see that there's really a great savings, but it's not really all about the money aspect. The clinical results uh, we have found through many years of using this product in our programs, um, the product is very good. So um, it, it's, a, it's a great seller for us and something to take a look at. And like I said, if you want to get involved in grafting and you're maybe thinking your patients uh, can't afford it or won't accept it, this is a really great alternative because the cost is so low and it allows you a little bit more flexibility with your fees. So Allograft, we have our own Allograft uh, brand. It's called Goldos. So if you're currently uh, using a different Allograft, we encourage you to, to give us a try. We do have some uh, really interesting processes and in how uh, the product is um, manufactured. It's a rice-shaped fiber, has some different uh, resorption rates than a conventional type Allograft. And we think our pricing is very fair on our Allograft. So if you are using a different brand, I encourage you to take a look at the Goldos particulate or our putty form. Uh, one nice thing about our syringe is that it doesn't show it in this image, but it does have uh, two different ways to dispense the product. It has a small little cap on the end of it where you can um, sort of like squirt out a, a small uh, thin band of the, of the putty, or you can take the cap off completely as shown in this image and um, dispense the product in that manner. So our product is a, it's 100% DBM, a good, very high quality product sourced from a very reputable uh, bone bank here in, in, in the States, obviously. And uh, it's something to take a look at if you're using a, a, a putty currently um, to take a look at the Goldoss brand. So these are the two membranes that we really like. Um, we've been teaching these at our programs for, for quite some time now. Uh, the Epi Guide is our, is our preference. These are both long lasting resorbable membranes. Um, you'll find that you really, we try to keep things simple, as I mentioned, you don't really need to have uh, resorbable and non-resorbable membranes um, and, and many different kinds of membranes in your practice. Uh, we found that the EpiGuide, uh, with the doctors that are currently using the EpiGuide, that membrane is going to work for really most of your cases and you really only need to stock one type of membrane because it is long lasting. It almost acts as a non-resorbable membrane. So the EpiGuide's great, and if you also like a collagen type membrane, um, this is also a very long lasting collagen membrane. So it's not one that's gonna be gone in a matter of uh, you know, a couple of weeks. It does stay around for a long period of time uh, to allow the socket uh, to heal and allow the bone to grow. So the Smart Titan Grinder, we, we mentioned it just quickly this evening in one of the cases. Uh, this is an interesting product. It's, it's actually very unique, but uh, clinically it's, it's also very good. We've been using this in our courses now for uh, quite some time. And if you're looking for an autogenous dentin graft, uh, in, the, in the past it may have been impractical to do an autogenous graft or the patients maybe wouldn't want to have a second surgical site. Uh, this is really a great alternative where it, it is the patient's own bone and the studies do show that dentin um, you know, has the same characteristics as, uh, as your bone. So uh, this is a great product when you maybe have uh, multiple extractions. Um, it's very affordable, so it's $49 per use. And the product makes uh, a lot of dent and graft. So if you put two or three teeth in there, I mean, you can have upwards of, of, of 10 cc's of bone very easily and, and more than enough uh, graft material to cover your case. So something to take a look at if you're interested. There's more information on our website about uh, the Smart Dent and Grinder. So we have a couple graph kits. This is a simple one. So if anybody's looking for, you know, maybe a solution to just having all of your graft instruments in, in one nice cassette, or if you're looking for maybe a, a new curad or an Orban knife that was shown by Dr. Nazarian this evening, um, this is a kit that's it's not expensive. Um, you know, it looks nice. It's a high quality product. And we just keep it here in this, um, this cassette where when you're gonna have a graph case, you don't have to go looking around for all different types of instruments. You can just keep it in one place. 
We also have some other graph kits to take a look at. We have some more advanced uh, needle holders and, and scissors, and, and you can see these available on our website. Uh, but if you're looking for some other graphing instrumentation, um, it's something we do offer. So the physics forceps, that's obviously, um, you know, it's one of our main products. We've, we've now, uh, this product's been around now for 10 years already, which is hard to believe from, from 2007. So I guess a little over 10 years. And this is the set where if somebody's looking to maybe you're not comfortable with extractions or they're not as predictable as you would like, or uh, maybe you're referring more often than you would like, um, we have really great success with our users of this product over the last 10 years of, of building more confidence with extractions, making the extractions more predictable, more efficient. This is the set where uh, if you're looking to try the physics forceps, the standard series is definitely our most popular set of instrumentation. This set will work, um, we'll pretty much do all teeth in the mouth with the exception of you're not going to be able to get back to a third molar um, just because of the access and the way the instrument uh, approaches the tooth. Um, you just can't reach back there. But this is a set that um, is our most popular. And if anybody wanted to try the physics forceps, this is what I would recommend. Um, we have a 90 day trial period on the product, so you're never stuck with the product. We have really great uh, policies at Golden Dent where uh, they allow you to try the product. And if you're not happy for any reason, you know, it's no problem. You get all your money back, so you really have nothing to, to lose to try it. We didn't show this set uh, on the slide this evening, but this is a set that goes further back into the mouth. It's called our Molar Series. But this is really more of a, an accessory and a, or an addition to the standard series set. You lose a little bit of your leverage with this instrument, um, but you do get back further to uh, erupted third molars and second molars that might be hard to reach sometimes with the standard series. So it's something else to take a look at. Um, it's just a set of two instruments. One's used for upper right and lower left, and one's used for um, upper left and lower right. The other nice thing about the set too is if maybe you already have the standard series um, and you're not aware of this, you can actually use these backwards, which is unique too. You can place the bumper either on the buckle side or the lingual side, depending on uh, the specific case you're working on. These are our separators. These aren't um, these instruments aren't terribly expensive. Um, I think they're around like I don't know seventy-five dollars each with the with the discount this evening that I'll show here in a second. Um, but these are nice instruments where if you want to start the atraumatic extraction process. You can start to sever the PDL, push away the tissue. Um, it can make the extraction procedure um, a little bit easier, no matter what instrument you're using, whether it's the physics forceps or conventional instruments. And then the two at the top are uh, micro serrated periotomes that we have that we call them separators. Uh, these are really good just to separate the tissue and, and prevent any tearing of tissue and just to make sure that you um, Keep the aesthetic area uh, how you would like it. So the Numpy system, this is an interesting product. This is um, this is actually new for us now. Um, it's something we've been testing for uh, a little while to make sure we were comfortable with the clinical results and um, happy with the product. So for anybody that's joined our webinars in the past, this is probably the first time you've seen this, uh, this product here for, with Golden Dent. And uh, there's a lot of information available on our website, but it's really a good solution for um, people that have needle phobias or if you're just looking for maybe uh, an easier way to, to make something that is a procedure that's maybe not your favorite thing to do in the office is, uh, is giving uh, you know, injections or, uh, you know, or using needles with patients. Um, this is something I think patients we found have appreciated and they find that um, you know, their whole mouth's not numb and they just find that it's actually uh, just an overall better procedure for the patient. Um, so it's something to take a look at. It's called the Numby system. And, and like Ara mentioned, it does work better if you do use their syringe, which is the Numby syringe. Um, you can use it with a conventional uh, syringe. You can try that, but we find that the procedure is just easier to um, implement when you use the, the syringe that comes with the system and the intro kit. So I'll mention our courses and then I'll, we'll get to the questions here. So uh, Amplified Dental Training is our hands-on program. Uh, you see here's just some class photos with, uh, with Dr. Nazarian and this is one of our classes at our AMP1 extraction program. Um, this is just another class photo. You can see a little bit of the clinic floor there at the University of Detroit Mercy Dental School. 
Um, so what we do is we have a couple different course offerings. So we have uh, AMP 1, uh, 2, and 3. So AMP 1 is going to be just extractions and simple socket preservation with like the Astugen plugs. That's a one-day program. Uh, the picture I'm showing here is actually from our last Dentra program, which is our AMP 3 program. Um, but first, let me just mention the AMP 2 program. AMP 2 is a two-day program where day one is all uh, comprehensive lecture and hands-on uh, model work in the classroom. And then day two is uh, a full day of working on live patients. So the participants that come to our program actually work on the live patients and get to do on live patients everything they learn in the classroom on day one. So that's a more comprehensive course where we'll extract the teeth, uh, use all the different craft materials we've discussed, use different membranes. Um, and then we take it a step further with our uh, EMP3 program, which is our immediate denture course, where we focus on selecting patients that need either a full upper or a full lower arch. Uh, we're doing the same thing as we do in AMP2, but we take it a step further where we level the bone um, and prepare the site for dentures. And then Dr. Nazarian will actually deliver um, some immediate dentures on a, on a couple demo patients and go through the procedure for everybody to watch. Um, but it also is a, a hands-on program where you actually do work on live patients. Um, this is the classroom at the university on, on day two where we do the live patient component. And you can see here, this is a demonstration from our program a couple weeks ago where we first do a demonstration with Dr. Nazarian to go over exactly what was discussed in the lecture in detail on, on actually live patients before we break out into our own operatories. So you can see here we do, it's, it's very hands-on, everybody's engaged and, and be able to watch specifically what we did. So it's much different than, than working on you know, a, a pig head or a pig jaw or models. You know, it's a, it's a real patient and it's a real experience for learning. So this is the clinic floor. So you'll see that we uh, break out. Everybody has their own comfortable space. That's a beautiful facility. Um, everybody works with a partner and we continue to bring patients just as quickly as you can work. So we're never short of patients here in Detroit that need uh, free dental care. And um, it's, it's a great learning experience as well as a, uh, a good service to give back to the, the community in need here in Detroit. So here's our, again, the, the four programs we have. We have um, AMP 1, 2, 3, and 4, and you can read more about those at AmplifiedDental.com or, or on our website. So I guess this is what some of you on the webinar have probably been waiting for. I know um, people do join our webinars sometimes to take advantage of the promotional offers on our crafting materials or whatever they may be interested in. So the, the promotional offer for investing your time with us this evening, we appreciate it. It's a 15% it's a off promotional code and it's called a web may so it's just w e b m a y and you can learn more about our products that we discussed this evening it's at uh, physicsforceps.com that's our product based website or amplifieddental.com is more of our educational component um, which is amplified dental training so we do these specials um, for 24 hours and the reason we do that is i mean these are better pricing uh, options than trade show pricing. Um, it's a greater discount than we'd ever do in the office uh, if you were to call us any day of the week. Um, so we do these because we um, appreciate your time and investing with us and enjoying the presentation hopefully this evening. So we do them for 24 hours. Um, so it expires tomorrow at midnight. So if you're interested in any of these products, um, please take a look over the next day and watch some of the videos online or give us a call in the office. And again, I'll just leave this slide up now so we can get into the Q&A session. But if anybody is interested, again, it's 15% off. Um, we appreciate everybody's time this evening. And the promotional code is WEBMAY. And I'll just turn it back over to Lauren so we can um, get into the questions this evening. Thanks, Kurt. Well, Haro, we got about uh, 15 minutes or so. Are you ready to take some questions? Absolutely. So osteogen, um, what kind of bone is it and what's the quality of bone for implants when you use the plugs? So the osteogen bone is a synthetic bone. It's uh, made of a calcium particle, but it's suspended in a bovine Achilles tendon. 
So it is a synthetic bone, but it's suspended in a xeno uh, graft type of material. Um, the consistency of the bone, I would say, is comparable to, let's say, a D3 type of bone, D2 type of bone in some cases, um, usually within 12 to 14 weeks. Okay. Any special suturing technique that you're using when you use the osteogen plugs? Uh, not really. I'm just sort of doing an interrupted suture or I'm just sort of making an X over the spot. The key to keep in mind when doing the osteogen, if you're doing a lower molar, then what I'm doing is cutting it um, like right, I'm pressing it so it's a little flat so that I can cut it three quarters of the way up, but maintaining one portion of the end to be as a whole so that when I put the um, root portion into the socket, um, it's not two separate pieces. It's still one shaped into two roots. If it's an upper, then I'm sort of shaping it like an upper molar. And so as long as you do an X over it, um, it'll hold in place. If for some reason you cut it and it's three separate pieces for an upper or two separate pieces for a lower, then I would definitely recommend more interrupted sutures covering the site as compared to just X over the, the spot. Okay. What is your experience and opinion of luxators as opposed uh, to standard elevators? And what do you think about the, I guess it's a three to one or two to one with a 60 second rule per root tip uh, before removing or extracting teeth? Um, I'm not familiar with the 51 or th a three to one in that, but what I would suggest is the following. I think uh, before you put any type of forcep onto the two structure, I think severing the PDL is very important. Um, while doing this, um, what you're going to do is release the hyaluronidase enzyme. And so what happens is hydrostatic pressure builds up. That's number one. Number two, if we're able to expand that socket with either a separator or a luxator of some sort and get some micro movement of the tooth, this in return will also accelerate that process. And then obviously using some type of forcep device will further um, enhance the uh, removal of the tooth. If we're using traditional methods, then what we're doing is going side to side and doing a figure eight. If we're utilizing the physics forcep, then it's an unrelenting force in the same direction, which is essentially the path of least resistance, which is sort of rotating it out of the socket. Okay. Um, what is your feeling about the importance of getting primary closure when you're using a resorbable collagen membrane? So if it's a membrane um, like the EpiGuide um, or the, the Collaguide that lasts a little longer, I don't think primary closure is um, es essential. Uh, I mean, it would be ideal, but if you have a first molar, there's no way that you're going to gain primary closure unless you're reflecting a big flap and trying to extend uh, that further and causing, um, I think, more trauma to the area. So I think if you're using a material like EpiGuide, that's my go-to for membrane. Um, I find that it, it holds the area very well. Primary closure is not essential and uh, the graft is maintained and not lost. Is there a limit to how wide it can be or does it just basically you get it in place and that's, you know? Yeah, I mean, I get it in place. Usually it's not wider than the width of a tooth. Right, obviously. Yeah. Okay. Um, you talked about splinting implant crowns uh, in the posterior, but wouldn't that create some type of hygiene issues? Well, I haven't seen recurrent decay in splinted implants yet, so I'm not worried about recurrent decay, but my big concern is lateral forces to the implants. And so in some cases when we're using shorter implants, um, then I highly recommend splinting the implants, still making sure that it's hygienic, that they're able to use a floss threader or a water pick, but I feel more comfortable, especially in the distal extensions, um, and there's several studies from Mission and, and other educators that say, you know, it's going to um, help 
avoid some of those lateral forces as compared to individually placed uh, implants. Let's face it, biomechanics is still the number one reason for implant failure, I think, as compared to some of the other reasons. Okay. Uh, I just want to make sure we get to as many of these as, as we, we can. Um, when you're using the um, the plug, are you search are you suturing uh, suturing through the plug or just on top of it? Just on top of it. The nice the nice thing of this material um, is that it doesn't feel like we all experienced a collar plug um, when it gets wet. It's almost like you need five of them to fill a socket. With the Osteogen material, it's still pretty dense. Um, it's it's, uh, I don't want to say it's like a styrofoam, but it almost feels like a styrofoam uh, when you're placing it. Now, when it gets wet, you're able to conform it a little nicer to the socket, but it has a very good consistency. So it's not this flimsy material like what happens with the collar plug when it gets wet. Okay. And especially at under 50 bucks a pop, it's definitely worth trying. I would say that's probably the best way to experience it is really feeling it in your hands. Compared to regular extractions, what type of force is needed for the physics force? It's one of our uh, attendees tonight mentioned that she hasn't been doing extractions over the last little while because of arthritis in her hands. And would the physics forceps make that process easier for her? Yeah, absolutely. What we found um, in our residencies, I mean, we've been doing this now uh, a little over 10 years, is that it doesn't matter the size of the dental operator utilizing a lever. Um, one's able to get this tooth out um, without having to put major force and keep it in a conservative way so that they can efficiently remove the tooth. So I would say, yes, absolutely, um, it's going to help in those cases where either A, the operator is a small operator or they may have some arthritis or some other issues uh, that prevents them from putting a lot of force. Now, we also have to mention it all depends on the tooth. It also depends on the type of bone that the tooth is in. So it's not one size fits all, but definitely using some type of leverage, we're able to um, move things in a more efficient way. Okay. For something like a maxillary molar, do you find that the osteogen plug is enough or do you need some type of membrane? Um, I use it routinely, especially for first molars, as long as the buccal plate is intact. So as, Ms., as was mentioned um, uh, earlier this evening, the osteogen is just for socket preservation. If for some reason a buccal plate is broken, then it is not sufficient. Then you need to use a membrane and some other type of graft. But for socket preservation, whether it's an upper molar, a central, a uh, lateral, a premolar, or a lower molar, it works very, very well. Okay, is there a specific membrane? You'd mentioned that when the, the buckle, if there's a buckle defect, you're not using just the plug. Is there a specific membrane? Right, then membrane I'm using the EpiGuide. Right, so okay. then I'm using the EpiGuide, and our goal with any type of guide is to extend two millimeters past the void. So if it's an upper tooth and the you broke the buccal plate, then you have to extend that uh, membrane two millimeters above the void so that it's on solid bone. Okay. Now, obviously, there's lots of options. So, I mean, is, is there a specific indication? Let's say, you know, you've got a, um, an extraction site and you, you've got a choice of osteogen plug or putty or allograft. How do you decide one versus the other? That's a great question, Lauren. So what I find is if it's a socket preservation, my go-to as far as simplicity and cost is the osteogen plug. So if I've taken a tooth out, I haven't had to reflect a flap at all. I've gotten it out in one piece or I've sectioned it and gotten the two root pieces out without having to reflect a flap and it is truly a socket, then my go-to is the osteogen. If for some reason, the buccal plate breaks, then my go-to is particulate goldos bone and the epi guide. If we're doing a full arch and we're, you know, we're going to graft the whole site, then I like to use the dentin grinder. Okay. What about the dentin grinder? If you're using uh, teeth, are you sterilizing those teeth or, or is there anything being done to the teeth before you put them in the grinder? So 
Um, the teeth are being cleaned with a burr, so we're removing any type of restoration. We're removing any type of decay. Sometimes you'll see calculus or tartar on the teeth. We're removing that or any type of soft tissue or granulation tissue. So we're using a burr first. At that point, we're drying the tooth. We place it into the grinder for about three to five seconds and put it on the grind cycle. Then for 20 seconds, we'll put it on the sorting cycle. At that point, we'll go ahead and take the contents. Uh, so there's two drawers. There's an upper drawer with larger particle size and then the lower drawer with a smaller particle size. We'll take the larger particle size and put it in a sterile um, dish that comes with the um, Denton grinder um, and put sodium hydroxide. So the material is treated for 10 minutes in the sodium hydroxide. Once 10 minutes has gone by, then we'll use buffered saline and rinse off the sodium hydroxide. The studies uh, out of Israel, uh, where this product came out from originally, um, show that all the bacteria content is eliminated using the sodium hydroxide, and that it is a very clean and sterile graft. Okay, uh, so is, it, is the grinder single use or can you use it multiple times? So the chamber that goes on top of the grinder is for single use. Um, each one of those unit dose uh, compartments that comes with its own buffered saline and sodium hydroxide and glass dishes um, is about 50 bucks. Got it. And then the grinder, okay. um, I think Kurt can probably mention what the promotional price is for the actual grinder as well. And you get a certain number of um, compartments with it. Okay, want to get to soon. We want to do like another three or four minutes of questions, and we'll wrap it up. Okay. Um, if you're uh, if you're exposing um, an implant, is there a specific reason or rationale of using a tissue punch versus laying a flap? You know, when do you do one versus the other? So, to are you? I'm sorry, I didn't understand the question. Are you saying expose it or uh, prepping the site? Um, I, exposing it. Okay, so if you're exposing it, they um, actually have an implant finder from Golden Dent that you could find on the uh, website, which is pretty much like a metal detector. And so as you pass it across an area where you may have buried an implant previously and uh, it wasn't a single stage implant, it's totally buried with a cover screw, then using this device, you can actually find the central location of it use a tissue punch and not have to reflect a flap to uncover it and then put a tall healing cap on it. It works very, very well. We didn't show okay. any examples this evening, but if you go to the Golden Dent website, you'll be more than, uh, you'll be able to see uh, more than one or two cases. Okay, what about DBM pipe? We have a few questions about that. Uh, do you ever use it and when would you use it? Yeah, DBM putty works very well. Um, in those cases where a patient may in fact have um, teeth that we're extracting, but their root canal teeth or they're severely uh, restored um, or they're severely discolored, I don't really want to use those in the dentin grinder. Um, root canal teeth uh, are not recommended in the dentin grinder. So for those reasons, then I'll go ahead and use the DBM putty because it's much easier to dispense the DBM putty within uh, multiple socket sites as compared to uh, spoon feeding the uh, particulate graft into those sites. Okay. What if the tooth is infected or there's a, a periapical radiolucency? Would you still use a plug in that particular case or a particular bone or clean yeah, it out so, first? Yeah. So whenever doing grafting, we always want to ensure that the source of infection is removed, which is usually the tooth. Once the tooth has been removed uh, completely, then what I recommend using is a curette to um, remove any granulation tissue. And we've all experienced it where you sit there, you're there with a curette for a couple minutes and you feel like there's still some granulation tissue but you just can't get into that site with the curette um, to remove that tissue. This is why I created the degranulation burrs. There's three sizes and they have a long surgical um, shank to it so that you're actually able to put this diamond within the socket um, and remove that that granulation tissue. Now, um, once that tissue has been removed, then I feel comfortable placing an osteogen or any uh, other type of grafting material. 
if there's been a periapical lesion um, that has been around, we also will definitely recommend oral antibiotics. And sometimes we'll also recommend dipping the osteogen plug in gentamicin before we place it into the socket site so that the patient also has the antibiotic mixed with the graft. So what's the main advantage of the Burr kit versus just a, a curette? Well, the Burr kit allows you to get into those hard to reach areas where a curette just you can't place into, let's say the mesial line angle of a lower first molar. That would be number one. Number two, it's um, also used to shape the bone. So many times when we're reflecting a flap, there's still some stubborn tissue that may be remaining on a ridge. And for that reason, we like to use these diamond um, round burrs to remove that extra uh, tissue so that we have a nice working field where we're placing the implant and there's no soft tissue. The carbide burr that comes in the kit is not only used for sectioning teeth, but it's also used to decorticate the bone. And then the last two burrs that are within the kit, the pear shape and the round burr that go into the straight nose cone are used for the larger cases that we saw in the very um, last case uh, where we actually level the bone. So here, instead of looking through drawers and trying to find burrs and bone files and things like that, I wanted to create a more efficient and effective system that all comes within one burr block in order to um, achieve the, the best foundation for implant placement uh, for the dental provider. Okay. Well, we're going to wrap it up. You know, you and I have done probably about a dozen webinars over the last couple of years, and we've never gotten through all the questions. So this one's going to be similar. I, I apologize. Uh, you know, maybe one of these days we'll do like a 10-minute webinar and leave uh, an hour and a half for questions <laughs> because uh, this is always great content. But we want to be respectful. I know on the East Coast it's uh, getting close to 10 o'clock and want to be respectful of people's time. But Ara, thank you so much. Uh, I've like I said, I've had the pleasure of doing this with you a number of times. I'm learning something new every time. This is always great content. Uh, we know your time is valuable and, and just want to thank you for, for providing us this great content. Well, thank you, Lauren, and I always appreciate working with you and what you do. Thank you very much. And I also want to thank uh, Kurt uh, for joining us and for sponsoring tonight's webinar. Um, we have many, many clients who uh, are, are uh, physics forceps clients who have gone to the, the training at Amplified Dental. Everyone raves about the company, about their products, about their return policies, which I, I honestly can't think of anyone that's ever returned the stuff. But you know, the, this is a, a great company to, to, to do business with. We've always uh, been very impressed with, with the people that work there and, and their policies. and. Um, I can't just say, say enough good things about them uh, and the fact that they, they sponsor these webinars. Like I said earlier, it's just a true dedication to the dental community. So thanks to, to Kurt. Uh, thank you, everyone, for joining us this evening. We know your time is valuable. Uh, we, we do these on a regular basis, and uh, we'll talk with Kurt and hopefully uh, do another one in the next month or two. Uh, and we look forward to seeing everyone on future webinars. So good night, everyone. Thank you. Good night.